this series of videos I am restoring this ASR33 Teletype machine. In the videos in this series so far I've completely stripped the unit down into its major components, stripped some of the sub-assemblies down, uh, refurbished them, uh, restored them, repaired them, found a few faults um, but mostly the machine was in very good condition. Um, it was extremely dirty, needed a good clean, some parts were fairly sticky so I freed those up, made a few adjustments and um, it's now working fairly well. I've still got a bit of work to do on it but uh, in this video we'll have a look at uh, connecting it to a PC and uh, trying to use it as a dumb terminal. So what I decided to do was to use this machine in full duplex mode. Now there's sometimes a bit of confusion over half duplex, full duplex and what it really means because uh, in both modes you can of course only print one character at a time and so there's no value being able to send and receive at the same time. That's not really what it's for, the, or at least not in uh, machines like this. In half duplex mode there is a single current loop so um, the receiver which is really the printer and the transmitter uh, send data through a current loop and that can include a remote machine. So if the remote machine is in the loop then it will repeat anything that is sent to it from this transmitter and conversely anything that is sent to this receiver for, uh, from the remote machine will be printed. Um, but in half duplex mode what tends to happen is because there's only one loop if I type a character on the keyboard here it will appear automatically on the receiver because the receiver is in the same loop and by the same token if the remote machine types a character that will also appear on the receiver on this machine because there's only one loop. Also any characters I type here will automatically appear on the remote machine. So it's a single loop and everything's involved. It may also include the reader uh, and or the printer because the printer is of course really part of the receiver. So that's what's referred to as half duplex. Now in full duplex there are two current loops. There is one where this machine is sending data and there's a second loop where this machine is receiving data. And that means that the two functions are effectively split. So in full duplex mode for example I can type characters on the keyboard here but they do not print on my receiver. They will only print on the uh, remote receiving machine and anything that the remote receiving machine types will appear on my receiver. So it's kind of like splitting the system in two. Now you can configure it so you have what's called local echo so anything you type on the keyboard even in full duplex will also appear uh, on the local receiver as well as on the remote receiver. It depends on what you want to use the machine for. Now the way I've decided to configure this is in full duplex with no local echo. If I want local echo I can have the remote machine echo any characters that I send to it and then anything I type here will appear uh, on the receiver albeit after being repeated by the remote machine. So to make this work what I've done is I've uh, actually returned the printer to how it would have come out of the factory normally. It had been modified. I've shown this board uh, previously but I decided I didn't really want this um, it was going to complicate the operation and wouldn't really add anything to it for uh, my particular use. This just enables you to uh, trigger the reader from a remote machine and I didn't really want that. So I've removed that, returned the wiring to a more standard form and it will now operate in uh, something that's much more akin to a standard ASR33. Uh, so we've got local mode and remote mode. In local mode then the current loops are kind of confined to this machine, doesn't talk to anything externally and anything I type on the keyboard will appear on this receiver. So we'll test that first. Also I've changed the wiring now so that the uh, switch on the reader now works. It didn't work before, I had to kind of force it to uh, drive the reader. Uh, the switch didn't do anything but now this should work. So we'll power it up The switch is in the central position at the moment, this is the mode switch, so it's effectively off. And if we turn it to local mode, the motor will start up, it might go through a few 
uh, cycles initially as it gets up to speed but it should then settle down running the motor but not doing anything else. So that's looking fine and uh, what I can do now is type anything I want and as you can see it's working as it's intended to. I can also trigger the tape reader so I can read a tape into this machine it's only printing it out of course it's not doing anything else with it I turn the machine off so you can hear me more clearly and if, of course if I put tape into the punch and set it to on it would punch anything or any characters that are appearing on the, uh, the printer in fact some characters aren't punched and some characters aren't printed but uh, there's kind of a, uh, a mix of which ones are punched in what way and which ones are printed most characters are punched some are control characters for the punch so they're not um, for example if you had a punch off character being punched then every time you did that it would stop the punch so there's little value in that uh, but it again depends on the configuration of the system but where this gets more useful because uh, at the moment it's only reenacting like a, an electric typewriter uh, where it gets more useful is when you um, put it into line mode now normally in line mode which is where it talks to a remote machine um, switch back to off uh, in line mode the uh, normal connection or the default connection for this machine is a current loop or in this case two current loops because we're using it in full duplex mode because I don't want to have to install uh, current loop uh, cards and um, converters at every machine or for every machine I intend to use this for instead I'm using this this is a uh, current loop to RS232 converter so the ASR33 is configured to full duplex using a 20 milliamp loop and that's what this is uh, configured to pick up I had to do a bit of rewiring in this to make it work it was wired in a bit of an odd fashion so I've now got this configured so that it's going to convert the two 20 milliamp loops into uh, send and receive for RS232 so I'll demonstrate this, I'll bring the terminal up in the corner of the screen. Now the terminal is set for 110 board, 7 data bits, 1 stop bit. Uh, although this is an 8 bit machine, um, bit 8 is really a parity bit, it's, it's really a 7 bit machine but it um, does uh, handle all 8 bits. Um, and it's set for a 200 millisecond delay for each character and for each line. Now you only need the 200 milliseconds between characters because um, it's sending a carriage return and line feed in order to feed the paper and so because um, you need quite a long delay between those two characters for it to work then you need the 200 millisecond delay. If you don't put the delay in it will do a carriage return but it won't do a line feed. Okay so I'll power this up. Uh, we need to power up the converter first otherwise it will just start chattering away and uh, at least it would do if I had the switch in the um, remote or line mode. So we'll turn these on, turn it into line mode and again you can see it's gone through uh, initial startup and uh, what we can do now is type on this keyboard and you'll see the text appear in the remote terminal it won't be printed here because I'm not using local echo and so as you can see um, the data is appearing in the terminal if I now type into the terminal the data will appear on the ASR33 OK, so as ever, I'm not quite sure how well you can see the text. Um, the camera just washed it out for some reason, but it's quite clear in real life. Uh, but we are seeing the uh, data appearing on the printer, and we're seeing the data appearing in the remote terminal. And by a similar token, if we enable the tape reader, 
then you can see the data appearing in the remote terminal window. Uh, and if we want to, of course, we could repeat that back to this machine and uh, to the punch or to the paper. Let's turn the machine back off. So, as you can see, this is now uh, working in both local and line mode. So the next thing to do is to get the outer case put back on. I'll get the punch and the reader realigned and then we'll take a quick look, see how it appears. Okay, so that's the ASR33 Teletype machine pretty much finished. I've got a few small jobs to do, but um, it's now fully functional. It's working the way I wanted it to. It's come up extremely nicely. Uh, looks almost new, not quite uh, brand new, but certainly uh, fairly close. It'll probably need adjusting again after it's been used for a short time. But um, as I say, it's come up very nice. All the keys work nicely. Punch and reader works fine. The machine works fine in local and line mode. And so I'll just give it a, a final quick uh, run through. So I'll power it up. Put it into local mode. And again, you won't be able to see the text, I shouldn't think, at this point, but I will zoom you in in a few minutes so you can see it printing more clearly. But anything I type is coming up on the paper. If I want the punch to work, I just turn that on and it's now punching. So it will punch anything I type or anything that's sent to it from the remote machine and uh, I can read the uh, punch tape so that's in local mode I'll just zoom you in so you can see the uh, text being printed and then I'll send the file from the remote machine <laughs> 